All right, I think we're ready to get started. All right, thank you, Stacy. Hi, everyone. I'm Shannon Kendall, and I work at American Crafts as the project design team manager here in Utah. And I'm excited to get to be here with you again to talk about resin and some more fun projects that we can do with resin. And if you've been in my classes before, then I'm gonna cover some of the same basic overview of resin at the beginning, and then we're gonna do some brand new projects that I haven't shown in a class before. So I'm excited to do these. Welcome everyone. Hope your Monday is going well. Okay, we're just gonna jump right in. So the first thing I like to cover in a resin class is kind of the basic overview of a two-part resin because I think a lot of people tend to be a little bit intimidated by it and there really isn't anything scary about it. So I wanted to show you how it comes. So mine have different labels than the ones you will have from Michael's, but it comes in two parts. So we have part A and part B and it's a resin and a resin hardener. And one little tip I like to share is that I always label the tops of my bottles A and B, especially if my caps are the same color because then I don't accidentally put the wrong cap on the wrong bottle. And the reason that that matters to me is that when these two are apart from each other, they're very fluid liquids, but as soon as they come together, a chemical reaction starts to happen and they start to cure. And when that happens, it starts to get hard and really, really tight, like acrylic. So if I put the wrong cap on my bottle and I've mixed my resin with my resin hardener and my cap, then I, my cap could get stuck on top of my bottle as that cures. So I always label them A and B, to keep track of that. And I do the same thing with my little measuring cups. So these are my little measuring cups and these, I just took a Sharpie marker and I drew A and B on the sides. And then I covered that Sharpie up with a little piece of scotch tape, just because for cleanup, I always use rubbing alcohol and rubbing alcohol will take Sharpie off these cups. So I just protected it with a little thin layer of scotch tape. And now I can clean them all I want and the A and B never comes off. So that's a couple little tips for you. Another thing you need when you're gonna work with resin is something to cover your surface. So today I've just put down a cheap plastic tablecloth. You could work on a table that you don't care about. You could put parchment paper down, or if you have a big silicone mat, you can put that down and work on that because resin, once it's cured, it'll pull right off of anything silicone. And for cleanup, because resin is a really sticky business. So <laughs> for cleanup, it's always the question we get is, Rubbing alcohol and baby wipes. That's my very favorite way to clean up resin. So that will get it off when it's wet, helps clean up your molds after it's dry. It, whatever won't peel off, you just put a little bit of alcohol on there, clean it with a baby wipe, comes right off. Comes off your skin that way, super handy. So have your rubbing alcohol and baby wipes on hand too. Then the other things you need are something to mix in. So you can use a bunch of different things. So you can use plastic cups, you can use silicone cups. These have little measurements on the side. And today, since we're doing a big pour, I actually have this big old giant silicone cup. See, it's squishy. This is off like the baking aisle. And this allows me to mix a whole bunch of resin at once. You can see it's a lot more than these little cups will hold. So I'll just use these measurements on the side. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna make today is I thought for this class, what I would do is try to do things that would be fun for the holidays. So for gatherings. And I know this year with 2020 being as weird as it has been for all of us that we may have smaller gatherings, but I think that's a good opportunity to be able to make your tables and your parties that you may even just have with your immediate family, super beautiful and fun. And so I wanted to do jump on the trend of the nibble boards or the charcuterie boards or however you say it. Um, these boards, I've brought some inspiration photos here, that, ha that you know, you put all of your fun little snacks and nibbles on and they have these little dipping bowls and you can do savory, you can do sweet. And I thought, why not make a board for a nibble board that can just be super beautiful resin. So at Michael's, I found this awesome board. And this one is a 23 inch balsa wood board and it's in the supply list. And I loved it because it had that awesome, beautiful bark on the side, see that pretty bark? So I want to keep that nice. And we're just gonna do a big pour right down the middle of this tray. So to keep it so it could work all the way from Thanksgiving 
Christmas through New Year's, I am going to stick with a just a metallics color scheme because I figure that way, whatever fun treats you put on here, you can theme to the other colors that you have going on. So if you want it to be really Christmassy, you could do that. If you want it to be really glam for New Year's, you could do that. If you want it really earthy and, you know, more earth tones and woods and greeneries, you can do that for Thanksgiving and it would look beautiful no matter what. So this will be a whole season board. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my painter's tape because I do want to not get any resin on this pretty bark right here. So I'm just gonna cover that up with painter's tape. So I'm actually gonna come in like a, maybe a half an inch past that darker seam. I'm just gonna cover that up. I'm gonna do another layer of it because mess resin will tend to move and if it slides down off my board before I catch it and clean it up, I wanna protect it from getting on that bark. So I want that to stay just like it is and not be coated in resin. You could do a clear coat of resin on it if you wanted to. That is also perfectly fine. Just for mine, I've chosen to do it in its natural state. Okay, and so I'm just wrapping this around, making sure it's all covered up, stuck to the bottom over here. The tape doesn't really wanna to stick to the bark, so sometimes I'll do another little piece of tape like this. Just make sure it stays in place, because it does stick to the wood, which is also why I came a little bit up on it on the front of the board as well. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We got a couple questions while you're doing that. Okay, great. Fiona asked, is resin food safe and how do you clean it? Yes, so the resin I'm using today is food safe. The one that is sold at Michael's is food safe. Um, Mine actually has a little label on it that says that it is, so you can always check for that. I made sure to use a food safe one for this. And then how do you clean the board? I just would wipe it down because you can wipe the resin um, with a, a you know dish soap and a cloth or a baby wipe. Um, but because I'm leaving my edges raw, I would just, you know, clean it carefully with this soap and a cloth and then rinse it by hand. That way your bark won't get damaged as much. I wouldn't want to run it through a dishwasher, but we're going to do some little dipping bowls and those you can run right through your dishwasher. The resin is super durable and it will just hold up. Or you could hand wash them too, if you prefer. Okay, one more little bit. Okay, all right, we've got that pretty much covered. Okay, and then I still have these ends. So see my ends here are kind of, if I pour my resin, it's gonna run right off the end, right? So we're gonna make a little dam at the end of each side. And what I'm gonna do is just stick it to the side of the board and wrap it around. And I'm gonna leave that tape tall not going to press it down onto the front of my board to create that little ledge so my resin will stay on top of my tray and hopefully not too much will run down the sides. Every so often a little bit escapes, but you can just clean that up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. But I found if I do this, it pretty much stays in place where it's where I want the resin to stay. Okay. Make sure that's got a tight seal. All right, so our board is all ready to go. So now we need to mix some resin. So I'm just gonna turn my board for a second. There's some more of that natural bark right there. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure my cup is clean. Don't want any bark chunks in my resin. So I'm just gonna wipe it off with a baby wipe real quick. And then I'm gonna do equal parts. So with two part resin, it's equal parts, super easy. Half A, half B. And the A is the resin and the B is the hardener on my bottles. And I'm just gonna use this measurement here. And I'm gonna go up to the four ounces. Since this is a big tray, I'm doing a big mix. I'm 
just going to turn it and kind of check it. Yep, we're right at four ounces. Okay. And the different cuts have different measurement lines on them. But I know for this one, I need a lot because it's that big two foot board. Okay, so now I'm just going to come now up to the eight ounce line with my hardener. I don't use a ton of resin like this on very many projects. I tend to do smaller ones, but sometimes these big ones are fun. Okay, I'm gonna put my gloves on. Another important thing to have on hand, because it is so sticky, you're going to want to wear gloves. So just whatever gloves you have or that you feel comfortable wearing. I like these, they're bright orange, but I like how they fit my hands. So these are the ones that I choose. Okay, and then I'm gonna need something to stir with. Now, normally I would stir with like a little craft stick, something like this, but smaller in my smaller cups, but because this is so deep, you can see my craft stick's gonna be kind of hard to hang on to because it's about as tall as my cup. So I'm going to use this. This is also off a of baking aisle. This is just a silicone spatula stirrer thing. And I'm gonna use that to stir my resin. And the trick is you want it fully, fully incorporated. And I might have to tip this to get so that you can see. When you first start to stir it, I don't know if you can see it, but there are cloudy streaks running through the resin. And if you have that, it's not fully incorporated. So my rule of thumb is to stir for about two to four minutes and try to stir slowly. Anyone who's been in my class before knows that I think this is like the longest two to five minutes ever. But it benefits you to stir slowly because you get less bubbles worked into it. So I kind of just try to keep my spatula down in there and I'm stirring and stirring. So this would be a good time for some more questions, Stacy. if anybody has a question while I Perfect. slowly stir my resin. Yes, we have quite a few questions. Tina asks, Great. Is, pa is painter's tape better than resin tape? They, they both work. I found that with this wooden board, the painter's tape was sticking a little bit better for me. But either one works. Either one works. Awesome. And now Laura asks, if she wants handles at the end of her tray, would she drill the holes before or after the resin dries? I would do it after. Because that resin is going to flow right down into the hole. So if you pre-drill it, you're going to have to re-drill it anyway, because the resin's gonna flow where it wants to flow and I can guarantee it'll go right down the hole. <laughs> and resin is easy to drill through. I do it all the time on earrings and jewelry. I just use a regular bit. There are like wet drip bits and different resin bits that you can get, but I just use my regular one and I've never had a problem. Then I've never Bonnie. even broken one. <laughs> Banu asks, Will the resin get destroyed when you use a knife to do things like cut the cheese? You know, this is super durable and I haven't ever had that problem. I mean, I guess if it did and you got a big scratch in there, what I would say is that you could just do another clear coat on top and it will completely hide any scratching or damaging that happens. You can just tape it off again and do a really thin coat of clear resin and it will fill in that, in that any cuts and you won't even see them anymore, but I haven't had that problem. The resin as I've used it is super, super strong. So you really have to scratch on it hard to get marks. And when you see the finished one, you'll see that um, because of all the different types of mix-ins that I'm gonna use, even if there were some scratching, I'm not sure you could see it because I've got chunky glitters and foils and all kinds of things that are gonna go into here. But if you did, that would be my remedy. Just do another top coat. And then Anna asked, it, if she can use resin to make a 3D cube to preserve flowers she gets as gifts every year. Yes, you can definitely do that. I know that at Michael's they carry some cube, triangle, and sphere molds that are really beautiful for doing that. Or if there's something else that you want to, uh, just keep the resin suspended in. A tip for that would be to take your flower and be when you mix your resin and you put it in there, take your flour and dip it in the resin first, because when the re resin gets down all inside the flour, then it won't get as many bubbles that are released when you put it actually into the resin. So like dip it in resin and then put it into your final project. Okay, I think we're pretty clear now. So I've stirred and stirred while we've been chatting. 
and I've gotten a pretty clear resin going on. I have some bubbles that I've worked in there. I always do because I'm a little bit impatient and I stir a little too hard, a little too fast, but it's not a problem, especially on a big pour like this. Um, a lot of it's going to be right to the surface and those bubbles will raise out with just a little bit of heat and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's bring our board back. Okay, and the first thing I'm going to do is put down a little coat of clear resin over the whole board. And I like to do this when I'm doing kind of like these pours that I want to kind of weave because the resins that I'm going to pour on top of it in a minute will move a little bit better. This kind of seals this raw wood. So I'm just using my spatula to smear it around. You could also use your fingers in a glove or a craft stick to smear this around. And I just wanna make sure I get it all the way to the edges. And this is a super thin layer. You can see I didn't pour very much on there and I'm really just kind of moving it around. This won't start to cure really for about 30 minutes. And then once it's cured completely is gonna take 12 to 24 hours. So it stays really fluid for quite some time. So you have time to kind of play with it and move with it. I'm actually gonna use my glove and get in these corners. Sometimes it's easier to just use my finger because I can feel how thick it is through my glove and get it kind of even. So I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Move a little bit this way. Okay. Now that we have that down, I'm going to let that kind of sit. Now my board also won't absorb my tinted resin or my dyed resin as quickly because I have this clear resin layer that's already down. I actually shouldn't absorb it at all now that that's there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do First, I'm gonna wipe off my fingers with my baby wipe since I just had them in resin. And then I'm going to just take my heat tool. And this is just a heat tool like you would use to emboss embossing powder and stamping or any other kind of crafting. You can also use, you can use any heat source. You can use a lighter and pull it across it. One of those little butane torches that you do for the top of creme brulee, you could use that. Um, just as long as it has a low airflow and a high heat. That's what you want. So I'm just gonna go over my board with this. Just to help those bubbles, the heat helps the bubbles rise up to the surface. And this layer isn't as super important that it be completely bubble free because the ones on top are gonna to cover this whole layer. So that is good enough for that. Okay, and now I'm gonna divide my remaining resin, I'm gonna scoot this up just a little bit, into more colors. And so I'm just gonna take this clear resin that we mixed, I'm gonna pour it into some other cups. So these are just little plastic cups. You could use little paper cups. You could use the little tiny silicone mixing cups. These I like because I don't have to clean them. They don't cost very much and you can just throw them right away when you're done. And I want to reserve a little bit of clear. So I still have a little bit of clear in my big cup because I like always having a little bit of clear. It helps me to um, divide my colors as I'm pouring them. Okay, and we're gonna use a few different types of mix-ins. These are dye mix-ins, and they are an alcohol ink, and you just give them a little shake. This one is opaque gold. I do that in one. So these are our metallics. This is how we're gonna get our pretty metallic. And so you just drop it straight into the resin. I'll start with 10, 11-ish drops and stir it and see what we get. While you're doing that, that's a question. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she asked, is resin affected by heat, cold, or humidity when you're pouring? I 
think I've poured, done a resin pour outside once on a kind of hot day, and I did find that it was curing a little quicker than when I was inside. I haven't really, I usually have a fan going. I forgot to mention this when we covered resin basics, so I'll cover it now. You, you want a well-ventilated area to work in. Because these are a chemical reaction, you're gonna get some fumes. So usually I wear um, a, uh, a face mask that filters the chemicals, and then I have a fan going or, and or a window open. And I haven't noticed that the cold affects it very much, but I haven't been in extreme cold temperatures, just, you know, room temperature and fan and open window on a nice day. Okay, another type of um, mix-in that we're gonna use really quick is this one. I love these, these are new. And they're a color changing powder and I use these in my last class too. So it kind of does a gold to red or a gold to blackish brown rust color. And it, in different, as you turn it in different light, you see the two shades of color in this powder. And I found this is super opaque and it doesn't take very much. And I'm using this, I'll show you this little tool. This little tool has a little scoop on the end. These are the resin silicone tools. And I love how I can just scoop up my powder with them. You could stir it with that too, actually, if you want to, but I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do some more powder. So I'm just gonna leave that one and use a craft stick. And this one, you can start to see it taking on that brownish rust gold red color when I stir, probably, it's darker. It's really cool that you can see two colors at once. I'm not sure if the camera does it justice, but it's a really fun, pretty, easy mix-in to do. It's just a pigment powder. And then I'm gonna do a white. I always like having a little bit of white, just like I like having a little bit of clear, I like having a little bit of white. And this one is a transparent white. It's still pretty opaque, but it's a little less opaque than an opaque white would be. <clears throat> Give that a stir. I'm gonna actually put a little bit more in. And I don't usually count drops or anything when I'm mixing my resin. I just kind of go for it and stir until I get the color that I like. Okay, and then this last one, I'm going to do another powder, but I'm going to do this silver powder. This is the original mica powders. And I'm gonna use a different little scoop to grab some of that and put it in the silver. And these just have a nice pearlescent finish. They're really pretty metallics. One more craft stick. Okay, so this is gonna be our color scheme for today mostly. Silvers and golds. These pearl powders are so pretty. They have a really nice shimmery shine to them. Okay, now we're ready to start pouring. The fun part. That's all fun, but this is the especially fun part. Okay, I'm just gonna start again with a little bit of clear and I'm just gonna kind of move it down my board in a fluid motion. I'm gonna do the same with each of these. Now I could use my stick. I'll show you some different ways to apply. So that one I just poured straight out of the cup. You can kind of use your stir stick to help. And that one I'm gonna have stop right there. On these big pours, I usually end up just pouring straight from the cut because it's so big of a surface. Okay, I'm gonna let that kind of move. Come in with some white. Put a little space between. So I like doing like really fluid wavy patterns a lot in my resin pores that are like this. Um, sometimes they're called river trays. If you do them in blues, kind of looks like the ocean. But I find it kind of reminds me of nature and just those natural ways that the rock forms and just looks really good with these metallics. Okay, I'm gonna bring in some silver.
Do some silver up here in this corner. Maybe some down here. And then this is our gold die. It's a really subtle gold. It's just got a little bit of a shimmer. While you're doing that, we got some more questions. Okay, great. Uh, we have a couple people who asked uh, when you're you're curing the resin with the heat tool, could you use a hair dryer instead? You can use a hair dryer, but I found that I like the heat tool a little bit more because it's a hotter um, stream of air, but the air is the stream of air is actually really soft. So like not a lot of air is moving, but it's really hot. So the problem with the blow dryer is you might get a lot more movement in your resin. So sometimes that's awesome. Like for this kind of a tray, that would be great because I could move these rivers of color around. I'm just gonna make this a little bit deeper by utilizing that force of the blow dryer. I'm gonna actually add a little bit more white to this. So as you're going, you can change your color slightly by adding a little bit more. Do some more white on this side. Get a ranging from transparent to opaque. Now, if I wanted to, I could even just pick this board up and kind of let gravity move my rivers a little. I'll show you what that looks like. It's still pretty fluid. Let me see if I can go this way. You can kind of see it. So they kind of slide and move. Or you could use a blow dryer or you could use just keep pouring resin and use the resin itself. I'm going to do a little bit more silver up in here. So you can see there's really no rhyme or reason. And every time I do one of these, it's a little bit different, but they all look good together. I'm going to hit it with my heat tool for a second. Pop some of those bubbles. When you run your heat tool over it, you can actually see the little bubbles pop. This is a big one. So you get to hear my heat tool for a little bit longer than normal. I want to make sure I get it all. Okay, I see a couple more places that I need to add some more. So these are kind of smaller areas. So I'm just going to use my stick to kind of move it. Do a little bit of shimmer. You can also use your stick to kind of run it through like this if you wanted to, to create even more movement. Sometimes I like to play with that and see what happens. Oop. That one just jumped right in, but it's okay because it's going to self flatten. So where I kind of got a little bit of white into my other colors, I just go over that color a little bit with a stick and let it. It's really forgiving, so don't be scared to just kind of get in there and play. We need a little bit more up in this corner. Use the last of my color changing gold up here. Okay. I think I've got it pretty much covered now. So I'm going to hit it one more time. You can also move your resin with your heat tool, but it doesn't move as much. That's when you really want a blow dryer. You wanted these to like blow and really make good waves. Okay, so now we have all of our resin colors down. 
we're going to, I'm just going to clean up my surface a little bit. We're going to add some more shine with some glitter. And so on this one, I'm going to show you how I, I am adding the glitter by just sprinkling it on. So this fun metallic glitter jar that I got at Michael's has all of the tones that we're using today. So it has all different shades of metallic. So there's these cute little gold stars. So I'm going to go over to those and I'm just going to sprinkle them straight on out of the jar. And I'm going to kind of follow the ribbon of my gold that was done with the dye. Do a few more up in here. And really this is just like sugar cookies, right? You just kind of sprinkle it where you want. This is a fun way to do glitter. The other way that you can do glitter is by mixing it straight into the dye. I'll turn this and get a few iridescent sparkles. These are fun. I'll do those kind of in the white. This is the fun part. If you are working with kids and you are okay with them being around your resin, you could let them kind of have fun and experiment with this. I'm also going to use some just chunky silver glitter. Just to give it another look. And I could keep going with this. You can do it thicker. You could do light amounts of glitter. Whatever you like, just play around. They always turn out so pretty. I do them different every time. Okay, so now this is ready to just cure. And those pieces of glitter, even though right now they're kind of sitting on top, they will kind of sink down into the resin. So you don't need to worry about those coming out the top of the resin. Um, oh, I wait, I wanted to show you foil too. I almost forgot the prettiest part. I love this foil. So this is just regular foil sheet. It's almost like little gold leafing metal. And I'm just going to take the other end. This is the other end of my little um, silicone tool. It has this little like piercing tool end, but it's just a little nice little tool. I'm going to just dip it in a little bit of clear and use that clear resin to pick up the foil. And then I'm just going to lay it right down into the resin. Let me do it kind of in the middle. Maybe you can see better there. Oop, if I can get some out. Just kind of have to be patient with it. Likes to stick to itself. So you can see that I can just use my resin tool to kind of lay it down. It's a lot easier because if you try to touch it with your glove and your glove has any resin on it, it's going to stick to your fingers and then you get foiled fingers instead of a foiled board. So this is how you get that deeper metallic ribbon running through. It's going to stick to my fingers anyway. So you can see it's just kind of like gold leafing sheets and you can kind of move it around in there and keep going with as little as much as you want. I would probably do a whole vein running through here. I'll show you what that looks like on my finished one. Um, just takes a little bit of patience. You can see it still goes down pretty fast. And the results that you get in the end are just so striking. Okay. So... The only other thing we need to do with this tray is to kind of keep an eye on it for the first 35 to 40 minutes, which I don't know if this one I'll be able to while I'm still teaching, but I kind of just would wipe the edge of my tape just a little bit to keep the resin up on there. And this is just a baby wipe again. You could put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on it if you want. But I'm wanting my resin to stay up on the tray and not seal my tape to the resin. So after about 30 to 45 minutes, it's important that you carefully take the tape off. It will still be wet. It will still be flowing a little bit, but will have started to cure. So if you can kind of, you want it at that in-betweeny phase, 
So you'll have to kind of keep an eye on it because if you let it cure completely, then your tape will be on your tray forever underneath the resin. So you want to take it off after about, mm, I would say check it at 30 minutes and then just kind of keep checking it because you want it solid enough and have cured long enough that it stays in place when you remove the tape, but that it doesn't um, stick your tape forever to your board. Okay, so that is how we do the tray. And now I'm just gonna set this aside. I'm just gonna set it over here. And we're gonna do some little dipping bowls. And these are super easy because we need little dipping bowls, right, to put our little um, sauces in or small little condiments on our nibble boards. And so we're just gonna use these leftover same colors that we had going on from our big pour. So I'm just gonna make sure my bowls are clean. They are, and I'm gonna put a tiny bit of clear down inside these bowls. And these were just little white bowls that I found. Actually just had these at home. They were just hanging around from a different project. I'm gonna heat this up. So another trick you can do is if your resin's starting to like not flow as much, you can heat it up with your heat tool and you'll get that viscosity back, which is the fluidity, and it'll start to move a little bit more again. I just want a tiny bit because I don't want to build up the bottom of my bowl too much. So I'm just taking a little bit of clear, swirling it around in the bottom of my bowls. I need just a teeny bit more. I could use a craft stick too, or a silicone tool. This is another end of the silicone tool. It has this like flat spatula side and you could use that to move it around too. These are my favorite for resin. I love, love these silicone tools. They're really handy. Okay, once I've got a little bit of clear in the bottom of each one, then I'm just gonna come back in and do basically the same thing that we did on our tray, but I'm gonna, because I'm working in a smaller space, I'm gonna use my little stick. No leftover resin wasted, right? This is what I always say. I always make something else out of the little leftovers. So I'm just gonna use my stick and make some designs in the bottom of these bowls in that clear resin layer. These will be nice and fluid. And this will be one of those little secret surprises. So when your guests get to the bottom of the dipping bowl, they'll get to see this print that they actually match your board. Be a little surprise at the bottom. Super easy, but super glamorous and pretty. Do a little bit of silver. I don't know if you noticed, I didn't really call it out when I was working on the board, but I left some spots where it was just clear resin so you could still see that natural pretty board color coming through. I'm going to do that same thing here with these bowls. Leave some of it just clear so you can see the bottom of the white bowl. Hey Shannon, we have a couple and of you questions. Don't... Oh, sure. Great. Uh, Nausea asked if you can put these bowls in the microwave. I don't know about that. I will have to look that up and get back to you on that one. I don't know if it's microwave safe. I would probably say no, <laughs> but that's totally a guess. So I can do some research and try to find that out for you. Sorry, just... Um... I'd hate for you to microwave them and release like chemicals somehow. I don't know if that would happen, but I'd hate for that to happen. And I would have said it was okay when it wasn't. So I'm just gonna err on the side of caution and say probably not, but I'll look into it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add some more sparkle just like I did on the other one. Then as a follow up to that, would it be dishwasher safe? I think so. I, I just hand wash mine just because I don't know how heat affects it once it's cured. So I've just only ever hand washed mine. I have pans that I already have to hand wash anyway. So, but I'll look into that because if you could just throw these in the dishwasher, that's a lot more handy, especially if you have a whole bunch of them. 
these would be pretty as little salad plates or, sal or you know, little dessert bowls as well. And then you could do the same thing with your foil. Pull off some foil and add a little foil thread through the bottom there. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, and just like on the other one, that will settle, the, me the metallics will settle down in, the glitter will settle down in. Let's do a few stars too, so they match our other one. You can really just kind of play around. And then you just set them aside and let them cure for 12 to 24 hours. And then I would um, wash them once by hand before filling them or using them. Just wipe down the board. And I'll show you what the finished ones look like. I'm just going to put a little foil on this one too. Okay, so we'll set those aside and let them cure. I'm going to take off my gloves and pull up our finished ones. You can see how they looked in the end. Clean up a little bit. So I'm just throwing away those little bits of leftovers, but you could do earrings with them. You could just pour them into another mold and slowly over time it builds up with all your little leftovers. Don't ever waste it. There's fun things you can do with those little bits of resin that are left. Okay, so here's my finished board. This is what my first one looked like. So you can see that I have this nice pretty bark edge and then I have a little bit of the natural wood showing. You could go all the way to the edge with your resin if you wanted to and if you use this once and this part's hard to clean and you decide you want to resin there, you could always resin it after, just like you could resin to cover any scratches. So that's what our nibble board looks like. And then here's how our bowls turned out. So these would look so pretty, just strategically placed with beautiful festive food all around them to make your holiday table just beautiful. I love how it turned out. I can't wait to use it this holiday. Okay, we have one more project that I'm going to show you really quickly. I'm going to get another pair of gloves on. Because we need a little wreath for our front door that matches our nibble board. So we're gonna, I'm going to show you how to use monograms to make a little wreath. Okay, so we have this really fun mold alphabet mold that Michaels carries. So it has all the letters of the alphabet. They're about an inch and a half tall, I would say, each letter. And we're just going to do a little resin mix. Might even have enough left from our first mix. Now we're going to do some letters in here. And I want these to be metallic as well. I'm just going to show you one letter and then I'll show you revealing the ones that we finish out of the mold just for time's sake. Grab my Okay. Get it all out of there, right? Don't waste it. I try to never waste resin. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit of white in one, a little bit of gold in one. Stir. And you could, so if you didn't want to sprinkle your glitters on, then this would be where you would just dump them right into the cup. And you can do that as well. Maybe I'll do that with the gold. Okay, hopefully I have a tiny bit of clear. I remembered how I did this. I needed a tiny bit of clear left and I think I do have a little bit in there. Okay, so for this one, you just choose your letter and this mold, a lot of resin molds you work from the front to the back. So the bottom of the mold is the front and you work up to the back. But with this mold, the front is the top. So you're going to, the, the first layer you put in is going to be your bottom. So, but it's fun that way because you can add foiling and designs and swirls and stuff and you know what it's going to look like 
on the top because you're looking at the top when you pour. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put in a little layer of white. So I spilled a little bit in the end. I'm actually gonna do the word joyful. So let's do, let's do the U, uh, let's do the F. Okay, so here's my F and I'm gonna put some white right here in the middle. Then I'm gonna put some gold in. I'm just putting a tiny bit in and letting it drizzle off the end. You could also use your silicone tools for this as well. And then I'm going to do some clear in the bottom and a little bit more white. So you can, I like that I can see what the front's going to look like because I can kind of place my resin where I want it. Then I'm just going to put some glitter right into this. Last bit of clear. Put it in the top. So here's some clear with just glitter. You could also put dye in if you want to. So I'm just doing pure glitter and clear. You can see it's messy business, but you see how I'm not getting stressed? So when you're working on yours and you miss your hole in the mold, don't get stressed. It all works out. And you can just take the edge of your craft stick, kind of swipe it down. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of this glitter at the bottom too. So that's how I would go. And you would just do it for how, whatever word you wanted to spell. Hit it with the heat tool and then let it cure for the full 12 to 24 hours. And then when we're done with that, this is what we'll have. I'm just gonna clean my surface because I'm gonna bring some yarn up here, my finished wreath. So I'm just, this is just rubbing alcohol. Now you get to really see how I clean up. Just squirt it on there. And all the sticky magically wipes up. And we have a couple questions. Sure. Um, so Jensi asked, um, what's the difference between the metal tools versus wood versus silicone when you're using epoxy resin? I love the silicone because when the resin, if you leave it, like if I left my cup that I mixed in and it hardened in there, I could just peel it right out. It just comes right off of the silicone. So that's my very favorite, or I do like the plastic and paper little cups and the craft sticks because then I just throw those away and they're not very expensive. And then the metal, as long as I think it's fine, I think all of them work equally fine, but you just need to make sure you clean those. So if you use something metal, just make sure you squirt a little rubbing alcohol in it, wipe it out with a baby wipe before it hardens in there because it will seal forever to metal so or ceramic or anything like that so if i left it on my craft stick it would seal on there forever if i left my cup you know it would just it would be in there too hard to get it out it seals to that kind of stuff but it does not stick forever to silicone so that's one nice thing about using the silicone okay i want to show you this wreath really quick so this is just a basic wreath form from michael's a 12 inch wreath form and this beautiful soft green chunky yarn that I love so much. It sheds a little, so be warned. You're gonna need a lint roller after you use it, but it's totally worth it. So this yarn, I'm just gonna cut off about a two foot piece. I'm gonna show you kind of the trick to weaving your own yarn wreath. So I'm just gonna start at the top ring and go around it. And then you just take these two ends and you go over and under each of these little bars. Okay, and then up around the bottom and over and under this way. I just wanted to show you briefly because I knew when I show you my finished one, people are gonna kind of wonder how to do it because it's super easy. It's kind of therapeutic. You can just turn on a show and, or a movie, listen to a podcast, that's what I like to do, and just weave your yarn in and out like this. And then when you come to the end of this piece, it's easier to work with these two foot length so that your yarn doesn't shred as much. And when you need to add another one, just tie it at the back of your wreath. And so this is what it starts to look like. Okay, so you would do that all the way around the whole wreath. And it, 
while your resin's curing. And then we're gonna pop out, these are the ones that I finished, okay? So we have joyful. So these just pop out and you can kind of see, I put some foil flakes in this one when I did it. So it just spells the word joyful. Okay, and this one needs a little bit of sanding. If you have any little extra bits, like I kind of overshot my mold here on this one, you can just take scissors. These are my resin scissors, so they, I don't care when I cut resin with them. Okay, and you see how I just cut off that little extra bit? And I could just do that all the way around, and then I could sand it down with an emery board and a little mist of water, and it would just smooth right out. Okay, so that's if you get some of those on the smaller mold, sometimes you'll get some of those little bits that need to be cleaned up. Okay, so there's our word joyful. Then how are we going to make this into a banner? I'm hoping we have time. Yes, we do. Okay, so I'm going to use a piece of wire because I want this word to hang in the center of my wreath. Okay, so I'm going to use UV resin, which I don't think I've used in a class that I've taught here before, but this is just a little bottle of UV resin that I got at Michael's. It is in a bottle that's a lot like a nail polish bottle with this little brush, and it is the strongest adhesive ever, especially when using it with another kind of resin. So I'm just going to use that to put these letters on my wire. So I'm gonna flip these upside down they're pretty on this side too, but my letters would be backwards. And then find kind of the middle of my wire, just kind of straighten it out. You could do this on string or anything else if you didn't want to use wire. Then I'm just going to use this resin. So the difference between our two-part resin and this UV resin is that this cures with a UV light or sunlight. And it only takes about a minute to cure but it's not so great for doing huge pours or big projects um, because it doesn't really cure super flat. But when you use it in small amounts, like on jewelry, or you could use this in earring molds, things like that, then um, it works really good. So I'm gonna just move my little UV light. You can use any UV light you want. So if you ha do Shannon, your nails with one. Me. Yeah. This is Maddie with Michaels, and chat wanted me to let you Hi. know that Joyful looks like it might be out of order. Oh, thank you. There we go. There we go. Disaster averted. Thank you so much. See, when I'm working upside down and backwards, I need you guys to keep me in check. Okay. I'm just going to glue these two. Hopefully, I would have caught that, but thank you. And I'm just going to set my little UV light over the top, and I just set my wire right into the UV resin. I'm actually going to do another little dot right on top of my wire. Thank you, whoever caught that. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Then I'm just going to set this over the top and turn it on. So that's just the little... UV light, you could do it with the one you use for your gel nails, anything like that, and you just let it set there. And this one I think does a 30 minute time, a 30 second timer, not minute, 30 second timer. So you just hit it a couple of times until you have it a good, nice bond. So I'm just gonna let that cure for a second while I pull out our finished wreath and show you what it looked like when I was all done. Okay, so these have all been Oh, you can see it against my shirt really well. So <laughs> these have all been attached to this wire with that UV resin. And then I just took the wire and attached it to the back of my wreath. This was just woven with that yarn all the way around it. Um, and then I just took one of these beautiful little sprigs from the winter and holiday section at Michael's and added that to the bottom and wrapped. I just attached it with hot glue right down here at the bottom and wrapped where I glued it on with a little bit more of just a straight piece of yarn. And then I added a few of these little sparkly foam balls that I also got at Michael's. They're filler balls, but I just added them as a little sparkly accent to our wreath. And I just think this matches our board so beautifully. It brought in green, which is that beautiful earthy color that I love so much. And it has a lot of texture. And I thought this was a fun way to use resin in a way that we might not have thought of doing before, make little word banners out of them. We've made keychains with these before as a project, but never 
something like this. So it's a fun thing to try. I encourage you to all try it. Make your holidays beautiful, especially this year when we might not get to be with everybody that we love. We might as well make our day with the ones that we love that we have with us beautiful and have fun doing it because it's really, really fun. It's like a science experiment. Just play around and you will fall in love with resin just like I have. I think that's all I have. Is there any more questions that we want to cover? I did not see any more questions. Everyone says that the project looks so fantastic. Everyone's really impressed. You did such a great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that you guys will try doing it. It's easy and fun. All righty. Thank you guys so much for coming today. Thank you.